Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture, although personally I prefer more modern buildings. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine? Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. These marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat, and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. 
Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find Prince this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. This hut is locked. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. The number is upside down. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings.
Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motive for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have her address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. With all these tourists, these shops must be thriving. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no creases. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. This page won't help me. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty?
most probably a family. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer. Betty served a family and a man on his own, a whiskey drinker, maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee, her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Do you think there may have been some problems between them? I'm not on those sort of terms with my staff. Now, please excuse me, I have work to do. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. <laughs> 